I have something to confess. We have worked hard on this session to have five countries represented on this session, included all three South Caucasus states. But for various reasons, it would, would, was not uh, unfortunately possible. But we have two best speakers with us. Our now very good friend, Roman Vasilenko, he was with us uh, last year. And our new guest, Vahan Kostanyan, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Armenia. And you know, Mr. Kostarian, last year after our session, the first question coming from our audience was about Nagorno-Karabakh. But unfortunately, we, 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 do, we did uh, we answer it <laughs> as we could. But uh, this year, uh, we have a real opportunity to know more about the situation today and the perspective from the first hands. But I would like to start uh, with the question about what we have just heard uh, by uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mitra Kuleba. I would have your reaction to what Minister Kuleba said. How do you see the current situation in Ukraine on the ground, the current and coming risks? What if the West no longer has the will to support Ukraine because of Ukraine fatigue and the multiplication of tensions inside conflict and wars? outside included Middle East. What can be the end of the war uh, of, in Ukraine and what if Ukraine loses the war? The question is not the taboo now. What consequences, what impact on your country, on your region and on global balance? We will start with uh, Mr. Vasilenko, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kazakhstan. Thank you very much. Uh, is it working? No. Not sure. No? It is working now. Yes. yes. Thank you very much, and I'm delighted to be here again. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Well, um, I had a friend uh, for many years, um, a journalist, and he uh, told me to never answer a question that begins with an what if. Because, um, I mean, speculating is, 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 is uh, an uh, ungratifying kind of job. But what I would like to say is that, of course, it is an extremely uh, sorrow and painful uh, thing to watch and to feel in your heart. It's a tragedy that is taking place, that continues to take place for more than a year and a half now. Uh, we, as Kazakhstan, a peace-loving country, a country that doesn't have problematic relations with any country, uh, we naturally want uh, the solution as soon as possible. We, we are prepared to help uh, to serve as a negotiating platform if uh, Russia and Ukraine would uh, want our services. We maintain relations uh, with both Russia and Ukraine, so we keep the bridges open, keep the doors open. Uh, we think the solution can be only found on the basis of the United Nations Charter and the respect for the fundamental principles of this Charter, including the respect for the territorial integrity and sovereignty of states, including, uh, in this case, Ukraine. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I believe uh, to... Uh, first, we should understand uh, what happened and when it started. Uh, the very principle of use of force was violated. Uh, and it was not violated first time back uh, in 21 Feb 2021 February. The international community, we, the South Caucasus, witnessed the violation of this very principle. Yet, uh, a year ago, uh, before the war in Ukraine started in 2020, in our region, in Nagorno-Karabakh, and unfortunately, back to that time, many of international partners were silent and they were uh, both-sided, let's say, when it came to, to the situation and not uh, putting clear and direct calls that the use of force is not acceptable. And this became a precedent. And if something is can be tolerated uh, in case of 
one country, probably we others can think or interpret this situation as a green light for them to act uh, in violation of UN Charter as well. Uh, nobody knows better the horror of a war than us. We witnessed it in back in 90s. We witnessed it in 2020. We are still witnessing the consequences of it, of the recent military aggression of September 1920, at the result of which Nagorno-Karabakh and 100,000 people were forced to the place and basically Nagorno-Karabakh is ethnically cleansed. But we do believe that at some point the world order uh, should be established in a way that the principles can be equally projected to everyone and everyone, everyone should ad adhere to these principles. And violation of principle without any geopolitical uh, calculations should be equally raised and should be equally rejected by international community. Okay.